Todos os dias o Hirayama acorda, rega as plantinhas dele, põe um uniforme, sai à porta e respira bem fundo aquele ar limpo da manhã, entra na van dele e dirige, ouvindo música, até um dos banheiros públicos de Tóquio que ele é encarregado de limpar. Essa é a sinopse muito resumida de um filme lindo, Dias Perfeitos, dirigido pelo Wim Wenders e concorrente ao Oscar de filme internacional. Esse projeto teve um início curioso. Era para ser um pequeno documentário sobre os banheiros públicos impecáveis, maravilhas arquitetônicas e tecnológicas de Tóquio. O Wenders, que adora fazer filmes muito enraizados no lugar em que eles se passam, é, foi passear com a ideia. Achou que ela seria uma excelente oportunidade para falar de um personagem maravilhoso como Hirayama, que é interpretado por um ator absolutamente fantástico, o Koji Yakusho. A vida toda do Hirayama parece um exercício em contentamento. Ele faz o trabalho dele com dedicação total, ele aprecia a natureza todos os dias, quando ele vai almoçar num parque, ele faz uma fotografia da copa da mesma árvore, porque ela nunca é igual de um dia para o outro. Ele lê muito e ouve a coleção de fitas cassete dele. A primeira música que a gente ouve no filme é House of the Rising Sun, do The Animals, e ela, no meio do filme, vai ganhar uma versão linda, cantada por uma mulher em japonês. Mas ele ouve também Van Morrison, Patti Smith, Lou Reed, de quem vem o título do filme, da música Perfect Day, e só coisa boa. Durante toda a primeira hora de Dias Perfeitos, a gente vai acompanhar essa vida tão regrada, quase monástica, no exercício dela de buscar a satisfação, é, a apreciação no trabalho digno, na natureza, na ordem, na limpeza. A certa altura, no entanto, entra em cena uma sobrinha que o Hirayama há muito tempo não vê. E daí a gente vai depreender algo mais de quem é esse homem e a vida da qual ele veio. Certamente essa vida que ele leva agora não é a vida em que ele nasceu. Fica claro que em um dado momento houve alguma ruptura muito grande e que esse exercício de contentamento do Hirayama é, na verdade, um esforço mais do que simplesmente um exercício. O Wim Wenders filma essa história com uma deliberação que parece fácil, que está oculta é, atrás da naturalidade com que ele segue esse personagem. Quase sem se dar conta disso, a gente constata, a certa altura, que o elemento que quase não está presente na vida do Hirayama são outras pessoas. É um filme que parece simples, mas é cheio de sentimentos imensos, alguns bem dolorosos. Eu me apaixonei pelo filme e eu fiquei me lembrando de como eu vi outros trabalhos do Wim Wenders, como Paris, Texas ou Asas do Desejo, em cinemas lotados em Paris, Texas, em que eu me acabei de chorar. Eu tive que sentar no chão, no corredor, de tão lotado que estava o cinema e era uma sessão normal de um cinema imenso que existia na Paulista. Eu fico triste que hoje em dia filmes como esse sejam considerados filmes de nicho. Mas talvez o importante seja procurar o contentamento. E eu encontrei bastante dele numa entrevista rápida, mas que me deixou muito feliz como Vim Venders. A seguir você vê ele falando um pouquinho de dias perfeitos. Hello, Vim. This is such a pleasure for me. You have no idea. Thank you. I've grown up, uh, not really grown up, because I was grown up already, but... I've come up uh, with your movies and uh, they have made me love cinema all the more. And uh, so Perfect much. Days. You have a nice collection there behind you. Better start with the first question, otherwise we waste our time. I just try to see what I can recognize. Okay. Oh, um, this is my, my, this is by filmmaker. This is part of the collection. You are there with a very, very nice uh, uh, sample of your films. Thank you. <laughs> Vim, um, uh, first of all, uh, congratulations on your nomination for Perfect Days. Brand Today, new, uh, yes. Well deserved. And uh, what a beautiful film. 
it broke me up completely. And in this case, I don't think this is a banal question. How did you dream up the story of this man uh, searching for contentedness? Well, I don't know if I dreamt up the story of the story found me. You see, the film started with a suggestion to make a film in Tokyo and involving these toilets and more like a documentary about the, these incredible architects and their incredible creations. And then I realized there was something more important behind. And I was so happy to be back in Tokyo. And I was so happy to see how the people of Tokyo came back from the pandemic such a civilized, caring, respectful way, very different from people in Europe, where I always was afraid that the pandemic had one big victim, which was the sense of the common good, but not in Japan. In Japan, it was as if they even appreciated it more. And that gave me a feeling I could dream up of a film about everything I loved in Japan. And, and I thought of this man who was a caretaker to these toilets. And from the idea and from the places and from the city of Tokyo came so many ideas that I almost felt I just sucked it up from everywhere and I didn't really invent it. Of course, Takuma-san and I, we wrote the story, but we were very much inspired by Tokyo and the spirit of the people of Tokyo. Uh, would you say you have been practicing something I would call found cinema? Uh, lately. Uh, it seems to me that more and more something catches your attention, something or someone, and it grows in your mind to the point it becomes a film. My cinema has always been very reality-driven, and even in my fictional stories, I love to infuse as much real life as possible. But lately, yes, but lately even more so than before, and my films are very much depending on a sense of place. I need to like yes. the place. And if the place inspires me, the story that can only happen in that place and crosses with this place, that is the film I'm interested in. And if the story and the film and the place belong together, then the characters come on their own. So I do a lot, own a lot, owe a lot to my sense of place, yes. Um, uh, how did you come by Koji Yakusho? Of course, he has a very illustrious career, but what was the piece of work that made you think of him for this role? It was the very first time I saw him, which was in Shall We Dance? And I don't know how often I've seen it. I took my whole family to see it because we always go for Christmas to see a movie. And that was the only time our Christmas movie was completely successful across all generations. They all loved him. And I realized one thing also in his other films. His eyes were... I think the connection so has broken more up. Telling, his eyes were so much more telling the story than his words or... His acting, he was an actor who spoke with his eyes. And therefore, when we were looking for somebody to be Hirayama, I only knew one guy. And, and of course, it was a dream. And then the next day, they came back to me and said, we called him up. And he said, if Wim wants to do it, I'm in. So we could actually write the story with Koji in mind. And that's He's... everything we're going to have time for, unfortunately, Isabella. I'm so sorry. Oh, my God. That's so... I just have to say, I, I, I'm so happy that you still love Patricia Highsmith. Yes, you saw she made a little appearance. I think she'll be happy. I yes. visited her a few times, and I loved her so dearly. She was a beautiful person. You do look a little bit like her, by the way. I, I do. That's a yeah. real compliment. You, you have the same... You have the same hairdo. <laughs> right, right. Maybe not as many cats as she has. <laughs> no, no, no cats here. <laughs> I'm allergic. Thank you. Thank you. Se você gostou desse vídeo, não se esqueça de curtir. Inscreva-se no canal e clique no sininho. E a gente se vê no próximo vídeo.